fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Rider of the Plains was the greatest champion of justice the early western United States ever knew. Daring and courageous, he brought law and order to a lawless frontier. And it was he, more than any other man, who drove the organized bands of outlaws from the new territory and finally made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger... Rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Apache Falls! Come on, Silver! Away! Young Dan Riley stood before Judge Loomis, half sullen, half defiant. Sally Bates sat beside him. Behind the two, the courtroom was crowded with ranchers and townspeople. To a man, they were hostile to Riley. And as the judge leaned forward to pronounce sentence, the low hum of conversation gave way to a threatening silence. Dan. Yes, sir? You've been tried on the charge of assault and battery upon the persons of Nate Jenks and Hank Billings, formerly your employees. Judge, I told you I... Please don't interrupt. Mm, No, sir. You beat both of them severely, so they were in urgent need of medical care. Perhaps the charge wouldn't have been so serious if this had been the first affair of the sort. Unfortunately, it wasn't. But don't call the judge. I tell you that I... Oh, I... Oh, I'm sorry. As I was saying, unfortunately, it wasn't. I've been hearing about you ever since you were a boy, Dan. You seem to suffer from a confirmed addiction to brawls. Ordinarily, I suppose you're a decent enough person. But you've got a temper and you can't control it. But, Your Honor, it was proved yes, in court that... in this instance, you were not to blame. You were lucky. If the man they call the Lone Ranger hadn't taken an interest in the case and proved you were attacked first and fought back only in self-defense, I'm afraid it would have gone badly with you. Judge, are you going to let the whole cat off? Yeah, what the heck? I want to inform the guests of this court that I'm on the bench and I'll pronounce sentence. If there are any further attempts to influence my decision, I'll have this room cleared. Now then, Dan, it's impossible for me to punish you on a charge that hasn't been sustained. On the other hand, on the other hand, I don't intend to set you free to get in more brawls whenever you see fit. But I'm not going to... So I shall place you under a bond of $1,000 to keep the peace. Moreover, I promise you this. The next time you're brought before this court and the charge can be in any manner sustained, you'll not only sacrifice your bond, but you'll receive the most severe sentence permitted under the law. In view of that fact, 
I'd suggest you go back to your ranch and expend any surplus energy you may have upon its management. Keep in mind the fact that there are better ways of settling arguments than by use of this. Try to win back the respect of your fellow citizens that you forfeited. And let's not see you here again. Now, that's all. You can go now and return tomorrow to arrange for your born. Court's dismissed. Uh, come on, Sally, let's get out of here. This way, Dan. Very close, Blaston. He should have got 60 days. If it hadn't been for the masked man, he would have. And you got out of this all right, but next time you'd better watch your step. One of these days you'll be starting something you can't finish. I will, will I? Well, if there's anybody here that'd like to try get to in, stop, stop me, I'll... Here, get outside. Get in another fight now. I swear I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. Well, what am I supposed to do? Stand for anything them yellow skunks want to say? Here's my horse. Oh, no, Dan. But that's your big fault. The judge was right. You don't know how to stay out of fights. I could count a dozen in just the past year. How is a fellow to help getting mad? Other people seem to manage. But doggone it, Sally. And no one calls them cowards either. Dan, can't you get it through your head that you can disagree with a man without becoming angry about it? Huh? Gosh, I never start anything of purpose. No? Well, shucks, it's just that one word leads to another, and then... And then you go crazy. Oh. I honestly think you go out of your head. Just like your father. Before he died, he lost every friend he'd had in the county, and you're doing the same. Dan, sitting there in court, I was ashamed of you. Those people don't want to dislike you. It's just that they won't stand to be bullied. I don't think there was a man in that courtroom you hadn't fought with at one time or another. Well, a fellow's got to stand up for himself. You mean this hasn't taught you your lesson? Hmm? You're still convinced you're never at fault? But gosh, the masked man proved that, that I... That Hank started the fight this time. But, but if you hadn't thrown them off your place when you discharged them, there never would have been a fight. I caught them stealing. Dan, I'm not going to argue. But you've got no, to listen. Wait. I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to believe me. You're going to have to change... Either you learn to control your temper, or we will simply have to stop seeing each other. Sally, that ain't fair. I think it is. But you can't... And I meant every word of it. Oh, now, look. We won't even discuss it. We'll forget about everything that's happened in the past, but but if you're ever in another fight, well, that'll be the finish. Come on. You can ride home with me. But, Sally... Get up, boy. Hey, wait. Get up there. Get up. Hey, wait. Hey, Max. Come here. What's this, Whitey? Come here. What do you want? Max, how much cash you got on you? Eh? Cash? <laughs> you don't talk foolish. You know I'm clean broke. Uh-huh. So am I. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, how'd you like to get some cash? How? See that fella just rode away? Sure. Dan Riley, wasn't it? Yeah. What about him? He's a fellow who was just up for trial. Uh-huh. I know it. They say he's got quite a spread over the north. His pa left it to him. Got cash in the bank, too. Yeah. That ain't doing us no good. No? <laughs> well, is it? <laughs> it might. Say, what are you getting at? Oh, I just thought of something. How's for getting our horses and riding out to his place and asking for work? Punching cows? Yeah. You loco. We've been doing all right riding the grub line, ain't we? What do we want to go to work for? Max, I reckon you got me wrong. Huh? I thought I just said we'd uh, ask for work. I don't say <laughs> I see you don't. Well, come on. We'll find our horses and I'll tell you what I mean. Later, Dan Riley returned to his ranch house and found two cowboys waiting for him. Oh, boy, whoa, whoa, whoa there. Yeah. Uh, howdy. You want to see me? Are you the owner here? Uh-huh, I am. Well, I'm Whitey, Mr. Riley. This here's my partner, Max. We rode out here looking for work. Talked to your foreman, but he said we'd have to see you. How about it, Mr. Riley? You think you could take us on? What'd my foreman say? Tell you we needed anybody? Well... No, Mr. Riley didn't. Said your crew was full up. We thought maybe you'd... I'm uh... sorry. If he told you that, then we don't need you. Better try someplace else. Gosh, we've looked most every place. Mr. Riley, don't seem like anybody can take us on. We're flat broke. We've just got to find something to do. Uh, haven't I seen you men in town? Well, maybe. I think I have. 
Been hanging around the cafe, ain't you? Well, maybe just once in a while. Just once in a while. Seems to me I've seen you there most every time I've rode to town. That's no place to look for work, you know. If you really wanted jobs, you'd get out and rustle around. Ain't that what we're doing? First time you've asked me for work. If you'd asked a week ago, I could have put you on and fired a couple fellas. And you won't take us on now? Can't. Couldn't use you. Well, we told you we're bust. Right, now, look that... here, mister. You can't do this to us. Look at the duds we're wearing. Most ready to fall off us. We need cash. Hmm. And clothes ain't so good, are they? Well, I'll tell you what. I wouldn't know what to do with you if I hired you, so that's out. But we keep extra work clothes back in the storeroom. I'll tell my foreman it's all right for you to pick out what you need. Just to help yourself, it won't cost you. Well, it's charity. But I think we're beggars to take your old clothes. Now, look here. That stuff ain't been used. We keep it on hand just in case. If you want an outfit, help yourself. If you don't, hit leather and ride. We want jaws. Which I can't give you. That's what you say. What's that? Mister, we don't care who you are. You ain't gonna push us around any. We came here willing and ready to work. You got a big outfit here. You could find places for us if you wanted to. Saying you can is... Well, it's just the same as saying you figure we're no good. Which is something we don't take from nobody. Why, you... You better give us jobs or we'll make you wish you had. You'll make me wish I had. Get off this place. Get off before I throw you off. You and who else? Just me alone. You feel you're man enough, mister. Just come on and try. You asked for it. <coughs> oh. You're the one calls us up, Max, ain't you? Well, Max, you want what I just gave your partner? Step up and get it. I'll show you. Oh, Max, wait. Huh? What is it, Whitey? What's the matter? I... Something's wrong. I feel all funny. I can't get up. Huh? I can't seem to move. I can't move my legs. Here, Whitey. Come on, get up, Whitey. Come on, take my hand. Get up here. Try it. Uh, come on. Uh, oh, oh, oh. It ain't no use, Max. I... I just can't. What in you le- rotten pool kid. Wait a You're minute. You're responsible for this, mister. But, but I didn't mean... I didn't Why know he that... never laid a hand on you? He never touched you. Never he lays. Can't get up. Can't hardly move. For all we know, maybe you'll never be able to walk again. Oh, but listen... Listen to what? Mister, we know plenty about you. We know why he was up in court today. And I can tell you right now what's going to happen when we tell a law about this. Oh, no, wait. You can't. Who's to stop us? <laughs> well, if this gets out, I'll go to jail. Then serve your right. There's talk again. Me in town right now... We... Why, with this on top of it... You'll be lucky if they let the sheriff jail you. Here, here, help me. We'll take Whitey inside. What for? Well, maybe if he rests, he'll be all right. How do you feel, Whitey? Max, I I feel off. Would it hurt you if we carried you inside? I can't stay here. Well, that's what we'll do. And, mister... Yeah? You'd better start praying Whitey gets all right. Because if he don't... Huh? You're going to wish he was dead. Three weeks passed, and then one day, miles distant, the Lone Ranger rode into the small camp where Tonto was waiting for him. Oh, oh, that's over. Oh, what? Oh. Yep. Uh. Well, Tonto, our work's finished here. Get him, feller? I found him and turned him over to the sheriff. Not good. What do now? Tonto, I'd like to ride back to Apache Falls and look up Dan Riley again. Why do that? Now, I'm worried about him, Kimasabi. Oh. There was a lot of feeling against him when he was arrested. Not right. The fact that his arrest wasn't justified isn't likely to make them forget that Dan has been a troublemaker. Ah. As a matter of fact, I rather liked him. If he could once manage to bring his temper under control, he'd be fine. Certainly there's nothing mean or underhanded about the fellow. Him, all right. But if he should get into another fight, injure someone else... Then there uh, heap big trouble. And that's why I'm worried. I'd like to return that way and see how he's been behaving himself. That good idea. I see you saddle, Scout. <laughs> Pack grub, too. Me know you ride. Fine. Then there's no need to wait. We'll start at once. Ah. Here, Scout. Yep. <coughs> we should be able to make the trip in just a little more than a week. Uh, not right. Ready? Ah. Uh, then come. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver! Away! <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. On an afternoon nine days later, Dan Riley, Max, and Whitey were talking in a cabin about two miles outside of Apache Falls. Whitey sat in an easy chair, a blanket over his knees. His face grew hard as he listened to Dan. Whitey, as I'm standing here, I'm sorry for what I've done. To hurt anybody like I hurt you is a terrible thing. I, I give you my word, if we, if we could change places, I would. <laughs> oh, but we can't, so it's no good talking about it. I'm willing to do everything for you that's fair and proper. I've already given you money for doctoring. I gave you the cash to buy this cab and more cash to live on. I'll give you whatever more is needed, but, but what you're asking now is too much. Too much to pay me for never being able to walk? I ride a horse again? Maybe not, but I, I just can't afford it. Mister, you'd better. Well, I can't. And that's the thanks we get for letting you off easy. We told folks Whitey'd been thrown by his horse. What would have happened to you if we told him the truth? What do you think they'd say and do if they was to know Whitey can't walk because you hit him? I... What would your girl say? The one you're figuring to marry? Hey, wait. Or Judge Loomis? What about that bond you put up to keep the peace? I could afford that thousand a heap better than the ten thousand you're asking. But can you afford to have the truth of this get out? No one saw me strike Whitey. I did. But that doesn't... Would you have the almighty gall to get up on a stand in court and swear you didn't hit Whitey? I tell the truth, of course. <laughs> well, then what more is needed? You've taken every penny I had in the bank. Cash won't never make up for what you've done to me. You seem to think it will. Like fun, I do. I'm asking for cash and plenty of it. Because it's the only thing that'll come even close to paying me back. But that don't mean I'd rather have the cash and be able to walk again. I think... D- yeah. I'll speak out. I think this sounds a heap like blackmail. We don't care what you call You've it. told folks why he was hurt by being thrown. If you wanted to change your story now, how'd you explain not telling the truth in the first place? <laughs> We'd tell him you threatened to finish us off if we did. Uh- and we wouldn't have to deny you gave us cash either. Just natural that you would. Don't Whitey have to live even if you did fix it so he won't never be able to work again? I see. So if I was in your boots, mister, I'd just get that 10000 and say nothing. <laughs> How soon must you have it? Just as soon as you can get it. I told you my savings... You've got plenty of cattle. Sell some of them. Well, this is a poor time. That don't matter to us. The market's down. My selling would be hard to explain. That's your worry. If I could have a couple of months... You've got a week... Not a day longer. But you can't. And after that, if you don't fetch us what we've asked... We tell the truth and you take the consequences. Very well. I'll do what I can. We'd advise it. In the meantime... We'll keep our mouths shut till you've made it plain you don't aim to pay off. I can depend on that? You can. Well, then look for me in a week. <laughs> you think we won't? Good day. Good day. Dad! Sally, what are you doing here? Who, 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 who did? I, I was riding by on the train. I saw your horse. Dan, why are you? Oh, I, I just heard about that poor fellow inside, and well, I thought I'd see how I was getting along. Come on, get up, fella. Get up, boy. Where was you heading, Sally? The town. Ride in with me? Oh no, no, I can't. Why not? Well, I'm pretty busy, Sally. I have to get back to the range. But Dan, you well, here's haven't... the trail. I reckon this is where I'll have to leave you. Oh, boy. Who? Oh. Who there? Dan, what is it? Is something wrong? You, you look ill. Huh? Me? <laughs> well, I'm all right. If it is a fiddle, sure, you're, you're just imagining things. Am I, Dan? Well, well sure you are. Yes, I, I think I was wrong. Huh? You don't look ill. <laughs> Ain't that what I just told you? You look worried. Say, Dan, what's... Dan, you are worried. I don't know why, and it's plain you don't want to tell me. Look, Sally, I... But if you ever do... Oh, wait. You'll know where to find me. Come on, boy. Get up. Get up there. Well, there you are, horse. I guess when it comes to fooling a woman, I ain't even reached first grade. I get caught out every time. I reckon the thing for me to do is get back... What the... Come on, Silver. The the masked man. The lone ranger. Oh, come on, Silver. Then, just like Sally, I saw your horse and waited for you. I was behind those rocks and heard what you said. I saw your face. You are worried. Worried? Friend, I'm just about plumb crazy. You think you could tell me about it? I've got to tell somebody or I'll go clean out of my head. Then? Oh, you helped me once before. When you hear what's happened since, I, I guess maybe you'll be off of me for good. Yes? I can't hold it in no longer. Out of everybody I know, you're the only fella I feel I can trust. That night in camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto discussed the problem Dan was facing. 
Although somehow this situation doesn't ring true. Why, you think that? Dan told me what happened when they applied for work. Oh. If he reported their words accurately, it looks as if they went out of the way to make him angry. Not right. I asked Dan if any of the other cattlemen had ever mentioned Max and Whitey asking them for employment. What? What him say? No one had. I've got a good idea if we investigated... We'd find they'd called on no one but Dan. Uh, what that mean? It hints at something I couldn't suggest to Dan because I don't trust his judgment. But why, out of all the cattlemen in the district, a good many of whom are closer to Apache Falls than Dan, should they call on just him? And why should they have deliberately picked a quarrel? And picking a quarrel, why should it have been with the one man who could not afford more mm-hmm. trouble? That keeps strange. It's not even the beginning of proof that this is a swindle, but it certainly makes it appear well worth looking into. Ah. Uh. The latest demand has been for $10,000. Dan asked me what to do. I told him not to sell his cattle, but to get a loan of the amount demanded. Why do that? Because if he gets that cash and he's being tricked, I'll prove it. Oh. What doctor say? You mean when Whitey was examined? Uh. Well, what could he say? Whitey claims to be paralyzed from the waist. That's something difficult for even a trained medical man to disprove. Uh. In other words, Kimosabe... What you think? If Dan's being swindled by Whitey and Max, we're the only ones who can save him. You got plan? They've given Dan a week in which to raise that money. Ah. Oh. I think between now and then I'll spend some time making their acquaintance. Five of the seven days passed by. And then late on the afternoon of the sixth day, the young rancher met the Lone Ranger in a grove of trees some distance from town. The masked man gave him full instructions. Uh... Friend, wait a second before you leave. Yes? Tano told me to meet you here, and I did. You told me what I'm to do, and I've said I would. But I'd like to know why I'm doing it. You'll learn in good time. There's no hurry. But why'd you tell me to borrow that cash if I'm not to pay it over to him? Max has been keeping an eye on you. He knows you've been raising the money. He and Whitey are convinced you'll pay it. If you didn't intend to pay, you wouldn't borrow. That don't seem to make sense. Later, you'll see that it does. Hey, you ain't got some notion they've tricked me somehow, have you? I'd rather not answer then. Well, I know you've been spending time at that cabin. I thought maybe it was to find out if Whitey was really ailing or just pretending. In that case, they certainly wouldn't be careless enough to let me find it out. No, no, I guess they wouldn't. I've just bought supplies from them several times and passed the time of day. But what for? To make their acquaintance. Oh, all gone. You're just talking in circles. Now why can't you... And if I seem to be talking in circles, it's because I've told you everything I think that you should know at this time. Further questions won't get you a thing. Now you'd better be on your way if you're to catch Max before he reaches the cabin. I have to talk to him alone? Yes. And tell him exactly what you told me? Right. Well, you're the boss. Where's he now? I told you that. He rode to Pine City last night. Why do you expect him back around 8 this evening? He should cut his trail somewhere this side of the pass. Uh, then I'm on my way. Adios. I'll be seeing you. Get up, boy. Get up. Well, that's what I stopped you for, Max. I'll have you 10000 late tomorrow. Now, if you want it, you'll have to meet me outside town where I said. And you better be there just when I said. I won't have no time to wait. And you leave in town, eh? I have to. And I won't have it over an hour between the time I get the cash and the time our stage leaves. You either be there or do without. You'd be going to Hullman? I figured to be. <laughs> well, I wouldn't care about waiting that long, and neither Whitey. You said 7 tomorrow evening, eh? <laughs> well, Dan, you can just bet your boots I'll be there. Dan was not in town the following evening, however. Instead, he and Tonto took cover in a grove of trees not far from Max and Whitey's cabin. Before long, they heard the sound of hoofbeats rapidly drawing closer. It's getting dark, Tonto. Is that your pod? Uh-huh. That him. I wonder what happened at the cabin. Him tell. Hi there! Oh, hold this over. Oh, boy. Hold that. Oh. Then I saw Whitey while Max was roping his horse. I told him I'd seen you and Max together yesterday. And what did he say? Nothing to show what he thought. He just seemed anxious to get rid of me before Max returned. Well, what do you expect to happen now? Plenty, Dan. And we're going to be on hand to see it. Come. Max should be in the cabin now. Max, just a second. Hey? Come here. Look, Whitey, ain't got much time. 6.30. It'll be Dan at 7. I've got my horse saddled and waiting. I'll have to ride. You still got a couple of minutes. But I tell you, Max, I ain't... I want to know something. You real sure that's what you're leaving for, to collect that cash? Well, of course it is. You ain't already got it? Whitey, what in thunder are you talking about? You met Dan yesterday. Uh-huh, I told you. That's when he said he'd have the cash ready tonight. Gosh, Whitey, you, you don't uh-huh, think that... Uh-huh, I do. What are you talking about? The masked fellow was in here while you was outside. 
fellow that's been here three, four times to get supplies. He's seen you when you and Dan was taught. Well, Gully, what if he did? What if he did? Max, he's seen Dan hand you a package of folding money. Why? He just happened to mention it. Didn't know what for or anything. Just figured maybe you had some kind of a deal with Dan. But just the same, he saw you get the money. You're local. Am I? If he ain't, then he lied to you. Yeah, what for? What would he have to gain by it? What's he know about us? But why do you listen to me? There's a stage leaving tonight. I've just been wondering if you weren't planning to take that stage and clear it out with a whole $10,000. Listen, Whitey. Yeah. You got this all wrong. There's something fishy to me about it. I ain't got time not to argue with you. Dan's waiting with the cash, I tell you. Got to get there pronto or he won't be back for a month. We'll get to the bottom of this when I come back. Now I got to Max, get... don't you take one more step. Doggone it, Whitey. One more step and I'll come after you. You can search... Ah, if you got the cash, you'd have sense enough to hide it outside. Whitey, I don't... No, don't. Get back. There we are. Who knows who might come along and see you? I want that cash. I ain't got it, I tell you. You better give me that cash. Get back. Wait. The masked man's gone. We're too far from the trail for anyone to see in. You ain't working that one on me to get away. Here we are. The cash, Max. The cash afore I break you in two. When are you going to spoil everything? You've got to believe me. The cash. Don't wait. Get back. Please get back. It's too late. What? The mask man. And me too, you low down rotten crooks. I'm going to take the two of you and... No, you don't. Here we are. Drop those guns. We got the drop in you, stranger. One move and you stop laid. Look out. <laughs> what a draw. Knock the guns clean out of their hands. Then you're going to take these fellas into town and turn them over to the law. Tyler will go along if he's needed to back your word. But you're not going to lay a hand on them yourself. But ain't they got it coming to them? And hasn't this experience finally taught you what can happen when you lose your temper? It was that very thing these fellas played on to swindle you. Well, I... And you're fortunate it was a swindle. If it hadn't been, if Whitey had really been hurt... you will get in heap big trouble. Oh, sure. I sure would have. Friend, I guess you're right. It's going to be a heap safer for me to let the law deal with him. You can remember that in the future. All right, Dan, take their guns. They'll pay for that trick in jail. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>